What's up, Dealy Gang? Dealy Kamel here. And man, you guys already know I am a little sad. We had a really, really long maintenance just the other day, and it was for the Selena event and adding the files into the game. However, because of how Konami handled the July box last year, instead releasing a selection box, I did think that we were going to get selection box leaks to, you know, last night. However, there is still the chance that we might get one. There is a sale that is ending on the 28th, so it is still entirely possible that we do receive a selection box at the end of this month. But if we don't, then I'll be looking forward to the selection box that comes out with the new release of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's World. So I just wanted to go over some of the cards that I thought would be cool to see or maybe cards that could come to Duel Links and maybe just talk about them a little bit and see what their place would be in the game. So. Let's get on because I've got a lot to talk about here. I asked some people in stream and discord for their suggestions as well. So let's get into it. The first one is one of mine and that is Royal Decree. And this is one of the Giga Chad floodgate trap cards negate all other trap effects on the field. Now, look, I know some people, they don't like floodgates in Master Duel, so they're definitely not going to like them in Duel Links. But let me propose something to you, right? Konami for the past three selection boxes have released three super overpowered trap cards that have been vastly more powerful than any other traps that we've seen in Duel Links, or I'm talking Compulsory Evacuation Device, Crackdown, and Ice Dragon's Prison. I never thought that we would see a card like Ice Dragon's Prison in Duel Links, especially since it's a top tier TCG card. World Decree turns those bad boys off, and with Konami's stance on their not being afraid to limit selection box cards before they come out i do think that this you know it would not be out of the ballpark of possibilities now the thing is world decree at three would be kind of devastating and i don't think that they would go to the lengths of putting anything in a selection box that is limited at anything other than three right they don't want to put something that is limited to one or two in the selection box because they want to tempt you to go through the selection box multiple times so you can have the most possible copies of this card however you know this card would cause a lot of damage to the meta in duelings because you know unlike master duel where where royal decree really shuts down floodgate and slow type decks like eldritch uh, royal decree in duelings would do a lot more damage because every single deck or almost every single deck uses trap cards and many of those decks use these super overpowered trap cards that are in the game just so they can compete with some of the more powerful decks in the meta so hey world decree i don't know but you know there is a place for it in duel links just based on how things have been going all right next we've got nibiru the primal being so if you guys don't know what nibiru does if your opponent normal or special summon five or more monsters this turn you can just tribute every monster on the field summon this card to your field and then you summon a token on your opponent's field with a combined attack and defense of all of the monsters that are tributed now we are getting to that point in Duel Links where basically every very good link deck that comes out i'm looking at or cuss right now they can be hit by nibiru speed roys right now they are absolutely popping off and they're one of the best decks in the game because they're probably one of the hardest to out and they have two built-in negates that can they can be brought out on turn one nibiru in this case while it does have the chance to be negated from the hand when that effect is activated there are not too many cards that can do that in duel links but to contrast this nibiru is not going to be usable against a huge number of decks right not that many decks do always require the five summons in a row but you know you take a look at the meta now you've got odd eyes or cuss pen summoning pendulum summoning four on turn one you've got speed roids activating their skill twice summoning the pieces for clear wing another tuner and then crystal wing these decks are definitely within nibiru range and a lot of decks that you know they're relying on spelling trap cards to kind of even the playing field for them they don't always have enough outs to all of the extenders and combo starters that a lot of these new decks have so nibiru could be a pretty sick equalizer and you know at limit three i don't think that it would be absolutely crazy 
However, you know, I, I don't think this card would be as good as a lot of people think in Duel Links, especially if you take into account the fact that it will probably be limited. I'm still thinking the cards we have in the game are just better general uses than this card. So I don't think it would be too overpowered to come to the game. All right. So let's talk about my next card, and that is going to be Effect Veiler. So this would be our first hand trap negate in Duel Links. Effect Veiler is the OG hand trap during your opponent's main phase only. Book effect, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard, then target one effect monster your opponent controls. Negate the effects of that face up monster your opponent controls until the end of this turn. So this is a super duper iconic and very powerful card. And we haven't gotten hand trap negates in the game for a reason, just because so many decks would just straight up fall apart with it. Now, Effect Veiler is something that, you know, at three, ugh, a card like this would be absolutely insane. Could you imagine someone in a 20 card deck opening two Effect Veiler when their deck only has a two card combo? Pretty, pretty nuts. So for a card like this, while I would like to see it come to Duel Links, I think a selection box would be a very weird place to put it, especially because Konami is looking to, you know, once again, sell three of this card. Is this card too powerful to put at three in Duel Links? I think that there are a lot of decks right now that can benefit greatly from Effect Veiler coming to the game to support their deck over some of the extremely powerful meta decks that exist right now however i don't know even though i love hand traps and i have been pushing for hand traps and duelings for the longest time effect failure even coming at three would be absolutely insane and this is one of the problems with adding these very pop popular cards right it's because the only way that you're going to see them at one on release is if they exist within you know a bundle like which is which are now called special bundles video on that later and a selection box probably not the right place for this card considering how powerful it is however again once it is released in one uh way like it's, if it is released in a bundle that we can't see it in another place to be sold so let me know if you guys think effect veil has come to the game where do you think it's going to be released in a selection box or a bundle let me know all right, next one I got from the Discord is Triple Tactics Talent. Now, this card is pretty sick, so let's read it. If your opponent has activated a monster effect during your main phase this turn, activate one of these effects. And this is basically just like if your opponent sets up a quick effect, right? And this is especially effective if you go second into a deck that has a negate quick effect like Speed Roads, or if your opponent is playing like Orcus and they have the Babble out and they're activating graveyard effects and stuff like that boom you have the condition for triple tactics talent so it has three effects you can activate one of them draw two cards take control of one monster your opponent controls until the end phase or look at your opponent's hand and choose one card from it to shuffle into the deck and you can only activate this once per turn uh now this is something you know i think that could possibly come to the game, but that second effect is pretty powerful. Take control of one monster your opponent controls until the end phase. There's no real restrictions on that. Either the monster is still able to activate its effects, you can use it for a summon, and it can attack. So I think that is the most devastating part of that effect. And also looking at your opponent's hand in a master duel format, right? In your opponent's hand, you're always going to look for the starter, but you may have other options, other ways to your strategy. In Duel Links, uh, it's kind of rough to say. However, something I will say in Duel Links is if you are activating this card after your opponent sets up their strategy, their hand may very well be empty. So, mm, draw two cards, take control of a monster with no restrictions, and then choose a card, send it back to the deck, let me know what you think, guys. I am de I think this may be a little too strong. Three effects is a lot, but you know, we've seen overloaded skills and stuff come with multiple effects like that before. However, again, you know, you have to take into account, you know, when these cards come to the selection box, they are going to come with a limit and they are going to stay there. So I don't know. If this card comes at three, uh, it's gonna be pretty rough to see how a lot of decks will play around 
people having just unrestricted access to this card, you know, even other decks that run the limit three trap cards, I think that they would probably opt to run weaker versions such as Fiendish Chain in order to include a card like this. So definitely think that it is that powerful. All right, next we've got another hand trap from the Discord. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. So this is, if you guys know Ash Blossom and Joyous Springs, this is her cousin, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. So it says, when a monster on the field activates its effect or when a spell and trap that is already face up on the field activates its effect, quick effect, you can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard. Destroy that, destroy that card on the field. And boom, straight up monster negate, straight up continuous spell, field spell, negate or continuous trap negate. So this is gonna hit a lot of stuff. So it says when a spell or trap that is already face up on the field activates its effect. Hmm. So let, let, let me know uh, something about this guys, if you can, so you guys can correct me on a ruling. Does this work on continuous traps? It says when a spell or trap that is already face up on the field activates its effect. So I'm gonna say this is more for like continuous spells and traps and field spells that are already active but then you have an effect that you can activate i don't think that this would hit something like crackdown or fiendish chain where you flip it up and then you can negate but hey if you can that would be insane however i do think that more decks need generic access to monster negates in duel links the decks right now that have access to it you know i'm looking at you speed roids it's a lot, man. Speed Roids are able to do so much just because they wall off so many decks and so many strategies because they can negate a monster effect and then they can just void all level 7 or higher monsters. Card like Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit would be a pretty good equalizer and I like the fact that it doesn't directly negate, uh, it doesn't directly target you setting up or searching like Ash does but it's just when a monster on the field activates its effect. So you're still able to, you know, try to play around it. However, you know, if you are playing a deck where like, you know, you definitely need your one starter and then, you know, your opponent has Ghost Ogre in your hand, man, you are going to be feeling terrible when, you know, your starter gets negated, it's useless, and now you can't play the game for several turns because your only searcher that you had in your hand is now useless so let me know i don't know guys the more hand traps i read the less convinced that i get uh that they should be in the game all right next we got infinite impermanence now there's been some drama in master duel about this card where now they show the imperm negated column on the board permanently now for as long as it is in effect an infinite impermanence says target one face up monster your opponent controls negate its effects until the end phase and if this card was set then, if this card was set before activation and is on the field at resolution, for the rest of this turn, all other spell effects in the column are negated. If you control no cards, you can activate this effect, this card, from your hand. Now, a monster negate, I don't think that this card would be super duper overpowered in Duelist. A lot of people in the Discord were saying that, you know, Duelings is not ready for Imperm. However, you know, not not even six months ago, we were in a Mech Knight dominated meta that totally abused columns in every way, limiting your access to monster effects, spells, and traps depending on your columns. And no other deck could manipulate columns like that. And we've already had a taste of that. You know, it has since been nerfed, but Infinite Impermanence, while it may not come in a selection box, I definitely think that it would be fair to include this card at one sometime in the near future of Duel Links. I don't think that it's out of the realm of possibility. Let me know what you think. All right. Next, we got a Speed Duel card, Lost Wind. So this is a card that is a part of the Speed Duel archetype, which is the same format as Duel Links, but it is not in Duel Links. So... Target one face-up special summon monster on the field, negate its effects. Also, its original attack is halved. If a monster is special summoned from your opponent's extra deck while this card is in your graveyard, you can set this card but banish it when it leaves the field. So, this was really good in speed duels during the Cyber Angel meta, you know, where we have Cyber Angel-ish, uh, Cyber Angel, the, the level 8 one. Oh my god, I can't even 
remember the name. The speed duel players are absolutely going to destroy me. But yeah, this card would be super great in Duel Links. It has a very, very general effect um, condition. Just one special summon monster on the field. You don't even have to wait for it to activate its effects. As soon as a monster hits the board, this card is going to take care of it, negate its effects, half it, and then if your opponent uses the extra deck after that, you can bring it back. So a deck that, you know, this is going to absolutely destroy Odd Eyes or Cusps or Cus Speedroids. And I think these are the three decks right now that are just leagues above everything else in Duel Links and Lost Wind would really help these decks, would help you play against these decks. And of course, right, the fact that these decks might try to play this card however i do think that all three of those decks mentioned they're going to be hit with cards at three in the upcoming ban list that releases around the time of the new world so they probably wouldn't be able to play lost win i really like this card and i think it's a fair addition to duel links right now let me know what you think all right so next is a two cards that i don't think will be the super duper overpowered cover card of the selection box but they could very well be in the selection box and that is cosmo dark eclipser and cosmo town now there are enough cosmo cards remaining in the archetype that we do not have access to for us to have them as box filler however man like just give us the cards man i don't want to have to wait you know a whole nother year for them to feel you know Feel that you know the game has progressed enough to give us these cards cosmo released to very very underwhelming reviews and the deck is super duper expensive now that we have two dark destroyer though the deck is in a better place but i do think that these two cards would absolutely make the deck a top meta contender dark eclipser again it's summonable via the regular cosmo means you can use one of your cosmo effects to summon a higher level cosmo monster and then during either player's turn when a trap card is activated you can banish a cosmo monster from your graveyard and negate and destroy and then if it is destroyed you can add one level eight or lower cosmo monster from your deck to your hand cosmo town is the field spell and the main engine card that really gets your deck going if you start off slowly and then it says you can target one of your banished Cosmo monsters return to the hand. If you do, you lose life points equal to its original level times 100. And then once returning, you can reveal any number of Cosmo monsters in your hand and shuffle them into the deck. Then draw cards equal to the number of cards shuffled into the deck. Now, the reason this card probably didn't come with the release is just because it allows you to draw. It, it basically gives you switcheroo or restart if you open a full Cosmo hand. And I don't really think that's necessary, right? We've we've got cards like Orchestrated Return in the game right now that are just letting you draw two and set up your combo for absolutely free. So I don't think that this would be too devastating. If there's anything in this whole video that I have talked about, this is definitely something that I want the most, right? It would make Cosmo justifiably powerful. And you know, I'm playing the devil's advocate here, but Konami has released very good staple cards for archetypes in boxes before, right? I'm looking at you... Uh, elemental hero straight out so it would not be out of their wheelhouse of things they'd be willing to do uh you know would i rather it be in a regular box no i wouldn't rather it be in a regular box because that box is probably going to be garbage right these are probably going to be the best cards in the box if it comes out and i don't i don't want to chance these cards coming in a really bad box i'm gonna have to go through and spend 9,000 gems on if the selection box is going to be really good then i'm going to go into the selection box even more because these cards are in it all right and one last card that is kind of meta meta relevant to something we've seen lately and that is extra hero cross crusader now this again i don't think it's going to take the slot of the super duper overpowered card just one of the selection box exclusive cards so this is the other hero link monster and it says two requires two warrior monsters if this card is link summoned you can target one destiny hero monster in your graveyard special summon it you contribute one destiny hero monster add one hero monster with a different name from your deck to your hand you can only use each effect of extra hero cross crusader once per turn also you cannot special summon monsters the rest of the turn except heroes now i do think that since the 
Sunrise version of Heroes has been very, very simplified, right? It's been, excuse me, simplified and then picked apart by the ban list and it's no longer really viable. Hero decks are now kind of divided into Destiny Heroes, Elemental Heroes, and then there's like some basic, like, you know, if you're playing some mass change, cheese, or whatever. This is going to boost up the Destiny Hero version of the deck that we just got more support to in Dystopia Guy. And I think that while they do already use the Wonder Driver, you know, Destiny Heroes are not super duper overpowered. And Destiny Heroes are not really making use of a card like Stratos right now, which made the other hero decks so much more consistent and so much more, you know, better. I definitely think that while Destiny Hero right now, they're struggling to hang on to Tier 3, a card like Extra Hero Cross Crusader could make them a very good contender for the top of the meta and again you know i don't want to be that guy suggesting that we get archetype crucial cards in a selection box but you know if you had to slap something in there that is relevant to the meta right now that you know konami would want you to jump on because a lot of people jumped back into destiny heroes given how cheap the deck is and how old the cards are this is the perfect card to give us in a selection box to ensure that those people they're committed to destiny heroes they're gonna go in so, yeah, that is all that I had for you guys today. Let me know what you think about the selection box. Do you think we're getting a selection box in at the end of July? Or do you think we're going to have to wait until Seven's World to get one? What did you think about the cards that me and the Discord came up with to put in the selection box? And what are some cards that you think would be good in the selection box? I really want to know people's thoughts on this. You know, just take into account the last super overpowered cards we got again compulsory evacuation device crackdown ice dragons prisons these are the most used cards in the game across all almost all decks right now think about cards on that level that you know the cards are so good that every deck in duelings wants to run them no matter what you are playing so peace out guys i'll talk to you later